Hi everybody, it's me, Mrs. TK, with another lesson from God's Word, the Bible. Except, I fooled you this time, this isn't a Bible. It's actually, some of you can tell, can't you, a hymnal. A hymnal is a book of songs that are used to worship God, or to teach about Him in some cases, and one of the songs in a hymnal is called a hymn. We've got lots of hymns right here. Wish where there were some hers, but it's just hymns. There was one hymn in particular I found myself thinking about the other day. It's one I remember singing a lot when I was a kid. And it goes like this. I was really confused by this as a kid. Maybe when you hear the words, you won't understand what they mean either. Maybe you'll be in the same boat I was in. So uh, let, me, let me tell you the song I was talking about. It goes like this. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. kind of high. It's not usually the voice I sing in with kids, but that's how I used to do it in church. And it was confusing to me. Like this part of the end I understood, O Lamb of God, I come. The Lamb of God, I know who that is. That's Jesus. He's called the Lamb of God because he never sinned. He was as innocent as a newborn lamb, perfect. And he was the sacrifice for our sins just as a lamb was used for a sacrifice to the people in the Old Testament days. So I understand the part about Lamb of God, I come, because yes, I want to come to Jesus, um, but what am I coming to him with? Uh, let's see, part of this says, that thou bidst me come to thee. Thou, thou, oh, oh, thee and thou. Have you, have you heard about thee and thou? Thee and thou and thy and thine. It's an old-fashioned way to say you and your and yours, those kind of words. You might be familiar with it because when we pray the prayer, the Lord, that's called the Lord's Prayer, we say, hallowed be thy name. Thy means your. So those TH words, the, thy, thine, they're forms of the word you. That thou... Thou is another one, that would be you, and that you, God, bidst me come to thee. You know, as a kid I figured out what that meant. Bidst me, that thou bidst me, I kind of figured out that what that means is that God is calling me, you know? He bids me to come to him. That part wasn't hard for me to figure out. Um, the part before that was that thy blood was shed for me. I know about that. Jesus' death on the cross, right? When Jesus poured out his blood on the cross, it was so that the sins of the whole world could be forgiven. But this part of the beginning, just as I am without one plea. Plea? What's a plea? As a kid, I did not know what that word plea meant. That's how it's spelled. It's kind of like the beginning of the word please. If you put an S here and an E at the end, it would be the word please. And a plea is kind of like that. When you plead for something, I found out later, when you have a plea, you're having a request, something you're asking for. You are asking for something when you have a plea. And also, that's easy to remember because when you ask, you're supposed to say, please. Right? I hope you know that's right. Say please when you ask for something. And so that hymn, just as I am without one plea, that means there isn't anything I want except Jesus' blood 
shed for me. Forgiveness through Jesus is the most important thing anyone can have. That should be our one plea, that we be forgiven for our sins when we do wrong and welcomed by God into his kingdom at the end of our lives. So now you know a new word, plea, if you didn't know it before. And that word happens to come in in today's Bible account. You kind of knew it would, didn't you? I'm going to try to show you that using some props, all right? Um, let me start with uh, some stuff I've got sitting around here. It's not a shoebox. It's a building. See, I added windows and everything. Well, pretend they're windows. Pretend it's a building. It's not much of a building, is it? Uh, but I'm trying to tell you about the beautiful city of Jerusalem. Uh, let's see. Let's add some more buildings. I could add this building and this building. Hello? <laughs> ah, okay, uh, that building. Here. Oh, here's a building. I think it's Manicotti. It'll be a building. Okay, there's a building. And, oh, oh, how about this nice round one? Okay, there's buildings. Lots of buildings. Wow, I have to be tall to be seen above the buildings. Jerusalem was the city that God's people had built. And it was beautiful. It had a wonderful temple. And because it held so many riches, it had to be protected by a tower? No, actually. It had to be protected by a wall. It was important to build a wall. Let me go over here. So that they could defend and protect the city and keep any enemies from coming and taking away God's treasures from the temple. Okay, well, we've got a wall going here. This is looking pretty good. It was God's people who built this wall to keep their city safe. And now you have to pretend that the wall goes all the way around the city. I'm not going to do the part back here. You can't even see back here anyway. No. For a while, the people who lived in this city, Jerusalem, loved nothing better than to serve God and worship Him. They were known as God's people, after all. But then they started to forget about God and His ways and do thing their, things their own way. We've been talking about that in these sessions, haven't we? The time that got called the exile. It's when God let Bad things happen to them and their city so that they could learn how important it is to serve him. God allowed someone to come and take the men and women to other places to serve other kings. And in doing so, they broke down the walls. The people who came to take things away from the city, they made a mess of things. They broke the walls around Jerusalem. Well, Nehemiah was one of God's people who had been sent away to serve a foreign king. Let's see, I'll, I'll add this guy here for the king. There he is. Okay, now uh, I gotta tell you about this one. Playing the role of Nehemiah today is a puppet that is actually my Jesus puppet. Okay, For, if, if this headband wasn't on him and I did a scarf different, he's supposed to be Jesus. But for the purposes of today, my Jesus puppet will be Nehemiah. Say hello, Nehemiah. Thank you. Okay, and like I said, he got sent to serve a foreign king. Oh, there he is. So he was living far away from this city, Jerusalem. And while he was there, he heard something terrible. He heard that the city wall had been broken down and that God's people's city was, was going to be just destroyed. If there was no wall to protect it, just imagine what was going to happen 
to the city. So Nehemiah felt very sad about that. Very sad indeed. He was so disappointed that God's great city couldn't be protected by that wall anymore with it all in pieces. He also knew that God's people had let God down and that's why all this had been allowed to occur. And so what Nehemiah did was, put your hands together, Nehemiah. That's right, he prayed. Nehemiah prayed to God to forgive the people for all the things they had done that were wrong, all the bad things that they had done and the ways that they had forgotten God's laws. Nehemiah prayed and prayed about that. And he was very sad. He needed, he knew that God would forgive his people. Of course, God does that. He restores us to him when we sin and ask for forgiveness, right? Right. But Nehemiah wanted more than just the people to be forgiven. He wanted that wall to be built back up again, to protect the city again. You know, if I worked for a king, as Nehemiah did, he was actually a pretty loyal servant of a particular king. Here he is right here, the king there in Babylon. He had, he could definitely have the king help him if the king was willing. But here's the problem. Nehemiah was not allowed to go and ask the king for help. Oh, no, no, no. You are not allowed to go to the king with a request. If you're just a servant, for sure. You had to wait to be called to the king. And even then, you got to watch your step. We know who's in charge. This guy. So what happened was, Nehemiah, when he went after praying and praying, oh, I can even tell you the kind of thing he would pray. Here's what Nehemiah prayed, not in these exact words, but what he prayed is, I ask you, God, here is my plea. Hey, there's that word, plea. Here is my plea. Make this king be kind to me. Nehemiah prayed that God would soften the heart of the king so that when he went to the king with his request, he would get what he needed. Help rebuilding that wall. And so Nehemiah, who had always been happy in front of the king, happy-go-lucky kind of guy, uh, he went to the king on this particular day feeling very mopey, very sad and depressed. He went to the king and when the king saw him, he, he was surprised. He said, Nehemiah, what's wrong with you? Before he answered the king, Nehemiah silently prayed that prayer to God again. The one that went, I ask you, God, here is my plea. Make this king be, do you remember, kind to me. He needed the king's kindness. So he gave that quiet prayer and then he answered the king. Why I'm sad? I'm sad because the city of my people is ruined. It's just destroyed and the wall and the gates are gone. Now, the king had to react. Remember what his prayer had been, Nehemiah's prayer? It was, maybe you can say it with me. I ask you, God, here is my plea. Make this king be kind to me. That's what he prayed. And do you know that the king said to him, How can I help you? What can I do for you, Nehemiah? So Nehemiah he spilled it all. He told the king how his city was ruined and the walls were all falling down and anything that was left in the city would be taken away by people coming to steal. And the king, knowing that Nehemiah was a good man, he said that he would help him rebuild that city wall. Imagine how happy Nehemiah was now. He was super glad. 
this king was going to give money and helpers to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. This king who didn't even worship the one true God, the God of Nehemiah and his people. This was truly God working to answer Nehemiah's plea, his prayer, his prayer that God would please be his helper. And he was his helper through an unlikely person, this particular king of Babylon. Well, Nehemiah knew he could depend on God because God restores us. Well, it's not enough just to have my Nehemiah and King puppets. It wouldn't be a lesson with Mrs. TK without one of my regular puppet friends. So how about I bring out an old favorite, Howie Heartstring. Come on up, Howie. The kids want to hear what you've been doing this week. <sighs> Fine, I'm here. Wow, you seem a little glum. Chuh. Sure. You got that right. I'm sad. I'm so sad. I'm so sad I could just put my tail between my legs and howl at the moon until Thursday. <laughs> Whoa, that is pretty sad. Can you tell me what's bothering you? No, I can't talk about it. <laughs> well, I guess I could check his heart. I mean, it is how he got the name, Howie Heartstring. It's... What? It... Howie, is that sand? Uh, probably. There's sand all over my kitchen table? You could have warned me about that. Why didn't you tell me you had sand in there? You didn't ask. Good point. Anyway, would you mind telling me what sand has to do with your bad mood? Hmm. Well, okay. I went to the, the beach and I built a sand castle. That doesn't sound sad. That sounds fun. That sounds like a fun thing to do. Yeah, but, but you don't know the half of it. I mean, I poured my heart into that castle. It was the best one I ever made. The greatest! It had towers and a wall and water around it and, and a, a big a big house in the middle. I mean, I worked really hard. I worked like a dog! Oh boy. Um, of course you did. But can you tell me what is making you so sad? Because right when it was almost finished, the best castle ever, I should tell you again, my dad shows up and he says, I forgot to do my chores. And he took me by the ear and he made me heal and he marched me right back home to do my chores. Mm. Oh, well, it is a good idea to do the things you're supposed to do. <laughs> You know that, right? Yeah, but, but, I know, but it's just that I made the castle yesterday, and, and now, by the time I get back to it, I'm sure the waves will have turned it to mush. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, you probably feel a lot like Nehemiah did. Who? Nehemiah, the man in today's Bible account. The one who was very sad that the walls around Jer Jerusalem, the city of God, had been broken down and destroyed. Yeah, yeah, he knows what I'm talking about then. Hmm. Well, the good news is that Nehemiah got some help to rebuild the wall. The kids are going to hear next week about exactly how all that rebuilding took place. With special help, because... He prayed and God delivered. God wanted to restore that city to his people. Hmm. But, uh, how does that help me and my sandcastle exactly? Well, maybe you should pray that God helps you think of a helper. Maybe God can give you an idea of someone who could help you rebuild your castle, make it even better than before. Hmm? Hmm. 
I never thought of that. I guess, I guess prayer is important after all. It is very important. We pray that God would restore us every time we sin, and he promises to do that because of Jesus. God is a God of restoration. Hmm. Well, I guess, I guess I'll have to go work on that, Mrs. TK. Um, can I come back next week and tell you how it went? Huh? Can I? Can I? Huh? I'm sure the kids would love that. Say goodbye, Howie. Bye! Oh boy. Sand everywhere. <laughs> well, will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being our great and awesome God. We know that when we sin and do wrong, you will restore us and send us the helpers we need when we're in terrible situations. You are with us through everything we face. For that, we are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you next time.